Here's a video construction of the P-11 Eagle from AFS Paper Airplanes. Start by printing out the template from the website, available in links in the book. When you have it printed, cut it out. And we're going to start making it. You can see the uh, valley and mountain folds. Here's a mountain fold. There's another mountain fold on the solid line. I'm going to make sure that this part is very precise because everything goes downhill from here if it's slightly off. You're moving the center of gravity further back on the plane by folding the corners in. Center of gravity is really important because that's what determines whether or not the plane is going to fly straight or go into a dive or go into a stall. Now we're going to move the, while we move the center of gravity closer to the middle, now we're going to move the center of gravity further back on the plane by pulling the nose back. On another mountain fold. Then you're going to fold the plane in half on another line. And you can see the dotted line here for a valley fold. So we're going to start with. This is very important also. I'm going to make sure that the lines are precise. And as it states in the book, you want to follow the symmetry of the plane before you follow the lines on the paper. As you start to construct it, you might find that the lines don't match up exactly. If that's the case, err on the eye of symmetry for the plane over lines on the paper. All right. Now I've got a basic outline. I'm going to use a piece of tape to control uh, and to keep the heel connected right here. This is where we're going to throw the plane from once it's made. So I'm going to place the tape on here. Notice the overlap slightly there. And now, we're going to make a cut. See how this is slightly overlapped? We're going to cut here so that that doesn't get in our way. So now we've got a cut in the tape and we can wrap then on the far side of the paper easily without causing ourselves trouble. Like this. So now I've got a piece of tape there. On the next step, we're going to fold down the wings along this valley fold here. And you can see the name of the plane now. As you've seen, fingernails are a good thing to use to make the crease nice and strong. 
notice the straight line along the edge in the back. Uh, you want to make it as precise as possible. With paper airplanes, any small variance <clears throat> from symmetry makes a big difference when it's flying. Same thing on the other side. Now we're going to fold the wings back up. So you can kind of see through the paper here, you can see the line. We're going to fold it back up along this mountain fold line here. Hopefully everything will line up just right for you here. These, uh, these dotted lines here should match up. And then the front here should be somewhere near the middle uh, of your fuselage, uh, top to bottom, right here. Same thing on the other side. This is really important to make it very symmetrical so your plane flies straight and so that you can control how you want it to fly. If you start with the symmetrical base, then you can use the flaps to determine if you want it to go right, left, up, down. All right. Next. Next, we're going to make some cuts. So we're going to open the sky up. I'm going to cut along the dotted line here. including both sides, both sides of the paper. It's okay to cut over that line because this is going to be scrap. Don't cut over this one because then you're cutting into your plane. I like to make sure I get scissors that have a good tip right here at the, at the tip so I can cut right down to the V. And you want to make sure your wings are lined up again. Same thing on the other side. be easier to do if you put your hands on the table. <laughs> All right. So now you've got your wings cut out and the tail. Now we're going to cut out the line on the back of the plane here. The reason for this is so that, one, it looks a little cooler, but two, um, when you have lots of surfaces at the edge at the end of the plane, especially on a paper airplane, and they get bent or curved or uh, worn out throughout use of the plane, it tends to cause you lots of trouble trying to make the plane do what you want. So by cutting on this line, like that, we make the corner a little less likely to run into difficulty and get worn out over time. Now, I'm gonna take the plane and push it flat on the table like this so that the keel is up. And I'm going to push the keel down to one side and then the other. By doing this, we create a corridor down the plane from the front to the back that helps to keep it flying straight. 
See if I can show you that, like this. All right. Instead of just having straight wings coming out of the fuselage, now we have it set up so that there's a turn. This also helps with the strength of the wings. And I'm going to push this back down like this. Same thing for the other side. Now I'm going to fold the nose in. I'm leaving a little, uh, little gap here. We don't want to get too crowded near the front of the plane. And now I'm going to use some tape to help the plane stay strong over the, its use. The nose tends to bump into a lot of stuff, so if you put some tape around it, it'll last a lot longer. So to do this, I need to get tape around this keel thing uh, and wrap around the nose. So what I'm going to do is cut a slit or a V in the tape before I put it on the plane. Let's see if you can see that. So I'm taking the tape, I cut one slit and I cut a second one. So now I have a V in the tape before I put it on the plane. I'm going to turn the V this way, and then I'm going to line it up with the keel that we created earlier. So now I have tape on one side of it and the other. All right, now I'm going to wrap that tape around to the top of the plane. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the tape, another piece, that's going to run along the center line of the plane, helping keep the fuselage in a strong uh, Let's say a strong way for like this. All right, so now I've got tape behind and in front, and we wrap the tape around to the top. Now we're going to flip the plane over. We need the a similar piece of tape on the top of the fuselage here. Again, this keeps the fuselage strong and sturdy uh, so that it doesn't get warped while you have the plane. Now, I'm going to place some tape along the tail section here. This is real important to uh, a little tricky to do, uh, but it helps put the tails uh, in exactly the right angle that we want. So you want a small piece of tape for this. I'm going to put it on, on an angle such that it doesn't overflow anywhere. Do the same thing to the other side. pushing the tail underneath and then putting the tape on an angle. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to do the same thing to the outside of the tail. This is going to be a really small piece of tape. So this piece on the outside of the tail, right along the side of the fuselage. Again, this is to keep the tail nice and strong. Same thing on the other side. This 
and slightly too large. I'm going to cut it a little bit. There we go. All right. Next, we're going to place some tape on the nose. One more piece to make it that much stronger. So this one's going to be a little bit larger. I'm going to place it across the nose and I'm going to end up wrapping it around from the top to the bottom. So in order to do that, as we did with the heel, or the keel, um, we're going to take cuts uh, out of the tape so that we don't have trouble when we fold the tape around. So to do that, I'm going to put a slit in there and one more slit at that point. And these two slits go directly to the corner points if you decide that you don't need uh, two or if it's a little bit unsymmetrical, that's fine. So we're going to try to put this one in first because we don't want it to be out when the other ones go on. And then we're going to wrap the, the other pieces around. And this top one last. So now we have a very robust nose so that when you bang into things, it'll be fine. Next, we're going to place a paper clip. This will help us ensure that the plane is heavy enough so that when it flies, it keeps up its uh, momentum and also places the center of gravity forward enough on the plane so that we're in good shape. Uh, this is a number one paper clips. There you go. And we're going to slide it into the back of the keel. Just like that. It should be fit pretty snug. And you might notice that it pops up the top here of the plane a little bit, and that's fine. Now we're going to close it in there with a little piece of tape on the back side. Wrap this piece of tape around the back. And if you have any that hangs over, just fold it. Alright, next. You've constructed the plane at this point. Now you want to make sure that everything is set up and ready to fly. You want to make sure that the points of the wing between the tip and this part are properly angled. You can see this in the book, how we want what's called a dihedral angle, so that the wings are slightly up, so that when the plane, say, starts to fall off to one of the sides, that wing will be producing lift that's more straight up than the other wing, which is producing lift on an angle, so that hopefully your plane starts to level itself. You might also notice that the uh, tails are a little bit curly at this point. One way to improve and avoid running into curly tails or curly wings or otherwise is to take higher um, weight paper to build the planes so that they're stiffer. And, and I recommend that that will, that will make the plane last longer and fly more true and make it less uh, affect the, the weather outside will affect it less, so pick up less moisture from the air. So one of the things that's real important before you start doing test flying is to make sure that when you squeeze the wings, the pocket underneath the wing opens up. You can see that. So do that on both sides. If you have any trouble making it open, you can use a pair of scissors 
Just take one of the ends of it, stick it inside, be careful not to rip the paper, and that'll help you open up the, the nose up here. And that's important because what that does is create the airfoil shape on the wing that you need. Now you can add uh, flaps on here if you want uh, to do that. Make a slight cut right along the back of the wing right next to the fuselage. Do the same thing on the other side. And those flaps allow you to control the flight of the plane. If you wanted it to go off to the left, you might turn the left flap up in which case it would cause more drag on the left hand side turning the plane towards the left. This can also be affected by the gaps underneath the wings and more of that is described on the fine tuning guide in the book. Happy flying!